Hello, this is Bernie Bishop. Welcome back to B5 Bible Study Network. Basically, I'm going to do a summary of my, my pastor's sermon today, Pastor Rich Wilkinson at Trinity Church, Trinity Church. And he actually has a series called Why, but this one was Why We Need Revival. Why We Need Revival. So basically, um, our, we, our church was supposed to have a revival this week, and it ended up getting, the revival was going to be, be uh, canceled or postponed because the city of Miami Gardens would not give us the permit to have an outside tent for the revival services. So we see that, uh, we got, you know, it's not, it's not just a mayor's fault here. We see a spiritual force at work at, with it, you know, against us right now. We know that uh, the stadium, Hard Rock Stadium, where the Dolphins play football, they are open for live events right now, but they refuse to give us a permit for our church, which our church is very, very good in the community. There's a lot of community, you know, services, a lot of community, uh, be able to help our community, give us you know, food and everything else. We've done a lot of things in the community, but the mayor's office refused us, give us a permit for the tent for our revival services that is supposed to start uh, this coming Friday. But we know that God's in control. We know the spiritual forces of evil are trying to attack us and so on. So God's work will not go forth. But we know that God is still in control. So we got to continue to look to Him, realize everything's going to be okay. We see a force right now in our country where in the United States, people are calling things that are bad, good. They're calling things that are good, bad. So basically our, our country has turned upside down right now. It's, uh, we got a moral failure going on where people are thinking that things that are good, good like church and so on, Christianity, they're calling those bad, while things that are, that are bad, they're calling them good. Things that are, you know, homosexuality and so on, and things that are evil, they're calling them good now. That's what's going on right now in our presence in our country. But we know that God's still on His throne. God is still in control. And everything's going to be okay. We, we put everything in His, his hands and His care. Allow him to fight for us. We are hoping, hopefully, have the revival uh, after Easter sometime. Hopefully, by that time, we got just got to pray that we'll be able to be okay. We get the permit for the tent, and everything's going to be okay. We'll have the revival after Easter, okay? So that's, that's a good thing. Let, let God fight your battles. When you're on his side, you will win. You will be victorious. You know, and on the side of Jesus Christ, let him fight your battles for you, right? Happened so many times in the Old Testament. Jesus and God said, "Okay, do this, do that." For example, for you know, even Jericho. March around the city walls of Jericho seven times. Just keep doing it every single day. And instead of attacking the city of Jericho, eventually God made the walls fall down. Not that not the Israelites, but God made the walls fall down. Right? He gave them victory in Jesus' name. Right? But He gave victory in the power of God's name. So the walls of Jericho. Crumbles to the ground. It's not about what they did. You know, did they, they obey God? Of course, they obey God. They marched around the city of Jericho, and the walls came down. Right. So we, we see that uh, we have the victory over Satan in Jesus' name. Jesus' foot crushed his his heel. His foot crushed Satan. Right. So we know we have victory in Jesus' name. So we don't have to fear when God is near. Right. Let him fight our battles for us. We're going to go to 1 Timothy 6.12. It says, Fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life that you were called to and have made a good confession about in the presence of many witnesses. So we got to fight the good fight of faith. You know, I would say ultimately God fights our battles, but if we do not give up, we have the victory in Jesus' name, right? So let me go to Joshua 23, verses 8 to 10. Joshua, verses 23. Very interesting story here. 23, 8 to 10, it says. So we're going to go here. It says, Instead, remain faithful to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. The Lord has driven out great and powerful nations before you, and no one is able to stand against you to this day. One of you routed a thousand because the Lord your God was fighting for you as he promised. 
That's why we gotta let God do the fighting for us. When God is fighting for us, we are victorious, church. In Jesus' name, we have victory because God fights for us. We have victory in Jesus' name. Amen? So if you don't give up, God will fight for us. And we have the victory through Jesus Christ. God wants to set us free from doubt and negativity. He wants to set us free from doubt and negativity. He doesn't want us to, us to be doubtful, doubting God's power, doubting God's strength. He wants us to trust in Him. Everything's going to be okay. We've got to get rid of this negativity. Remove it far from us. Uh, you know, even, even God says He's going to move our sins as far as the east is from the west. Let's do that with negativity, right? Remove these things as far as the east is from the west. We should, as Christians, we got to be positive, right? Think positive, realizing that God is still on His throne. God's in control, right? Amen? Jude 1.20. Let's go to Jude 1.20 now. Obviously, Jude is the actually half-brother of Jesus. So let's go see what Jude says in verse, chapter 1 and verse 20. In Jude one twenty, it says, But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, and pray in the Holy Spirit. You got to pray in the Holy Spirit, right? Pray in the Holy Spirit. That's where our power comes from. We got to tap into God's power and pray in the Holy Spirit of God. We have victory through Jesus Christ, through God's Holy Spirit. Amen? So, I said, God, okay, build, building a great church is not a business venture. It, it is a wife, the, the, the church is the wife of of Christ, the bride of Christ. We need to stop trying to make a church as a venture, as in a business, right? We need to tap in the power of the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit. Tap in His power. That's what we need to do, church. Tap in the power of the Holy Spirit and then we have victory through Jesus Christ, right? If we are not careful, we are going to think ourselves, talk ourselves, and act ourselves uh, of the deliverance of God and be deeper in bondage. So make sure, my friends, my church, you got to make sure that we uh, focus, focus on God, God's spirit, God's power, life on His power for us. And we need to realize that God is in control. God's going to fight our battles for us. So stop talking yourself out of victory. Stop asking yourself out of victory. Stop thinking yourself out of God's victory, out of your deliverance. We have, we have deliverance through Jesus Christ. When we submit ourselves to Him, His power, His resurrection power, submit ourselves to Him, and we can set us free from the bondage, the bondage of sin, the bondage of doubt, the bondage of neg negativity. God wants to set you free in Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4.8, give me one second, I'll turn there. Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. So, dwell on these things, right? You gotta focus on what is true, what, what is honorable, right? What is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, anything of moral excellence. Concentrate about these things, right? God says in the Bible. Concentrate on those things. Don't concentrate on negativity. Don't, don't, don't say, what was me attitude? No. If you want to be a light in the community where you work at, where you play at, you gotta make, you gotta have a positive. Positivity. You gotta have the Holy Spirit living through you, give you joy and peace and power and strength. We don't want to think about all those negative things. Oh, what was me attitude? Oh, what's happening here? And start doubting God. And of course not. God is still on the throne. And God wants us to think about these things. And as written in Philippians 4, verse 8. So think about those things, right? 
also in our church church today, we had a testimony. A guy, he had a testimony about how he was thinking about, he was thinking about negative things, negative things. And finally, God got a hold of his heart. He started thinking about positive things. And basically, the bottom line is that you know, so God can show up at any time. In the morning, in the daytime, in the evening. So we, we might have a, a day start off you know, not so good, right? But we know that when we trust in God, rely upon Him, everything's going to be okay. Because God can show up at any time. He can make turn to a, a bad day into a good day at any time. So that, you know, when things are not going right in your life, call out to God. He will come and help you in your time of need. It might not come in your exact thing, okay, I, I, I need something right this second. But God comes in His perfect timing, right? God can show up any time and take care of you. Take care of your business, take care of your family, take care of your marriage, your children. God can come in any time. God is on the throne, God's still in control, amen? Okay, God wants to deliver His people from hatefulness and bitterness. God wants to deliver His people from hatefulness and bitterness. We as a church, you know, even Jesus said that people will know you my disciples by your love, right? By our love, people will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ by our love. It doesn't say by our hatefulness, by our bitterness, of course not, right? The, the world will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ by His love, right? The bottom line, we have love, the body of believers, love those who don't know, don't know Jesus Christ yet, into the kingdom of God. So love, by our love, people will know that we follow Jesus Christ. So we can't be filled with hatefulness and bitterness when we are disciples, we are followers of Jesus Christ. We got to be of love, love people in the kingdom of heaven. Love the body of believers, love your wife, love your husband, love your children. We got to be about love, right? Because God is love. So when we are doing things in love, we are doing God's will, right? Amen? So when so Jude 121, let's read Jude 121 now. Jude 121 says, Keep yourselves in the love of God, expecting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. So keep yourselves in the love of God. So when we are disciples of Jesus Christ, His followers, believers in Jesus Christ, we need to be filled with love. God's love, right? God's love will help us make the difference in this world we live in. Loving people into the kingdom of heaven, loving each other in the body of Christ. We gotta love, right? That's the bottom line. We gotta love. That's what love's all about. To so love people with the love God has given us through Jesus Christ. But God is getting us ready for revival. Even though at Trinity Church we're not having the revival services this week, but God is still getting us ready for a revival. It doesn't have to be a big church service. It can be revival in yourself, in myself, in Bernie Bishop, and you guys. It's got to be revival. God wants to do a new work in our hearts, in our spirits, right? He wants to you know, do a new work, new work in you spiritually and financially and physically. He wants to do a new work in us, right? So we don't have to have revival services this week to be able to have that. We can still have a revival because God wants to do a revival in you and me, in Trinity Church, in, in, in our community. God wants to do a revival, right? Whether it's now or whether it's after Easter, God wants to get us prepared for a revival. Amen? God's going to replace your, your broken heart with a new heart. You know, some people have lost, lost, lost loved ones during COVID-19, lost jobs, had hard times financially, but God wants to replace your broken heart with a new heart. Amen? God's got God to love. He loves you so much. I love you guys too. So make sure you realize that God wants to give you, replace your broken heart with a new one, a new heart. Finally, the last verse is Jude 124. It says, Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. So, also verse 25, and then verse 25 too. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, 
majesty, power, and authority for all time, now and forever. Amen. So that's the bottom line, that Jesus Christ is in control, God is still on His throne, God wants to do revival in you, He wants us to give you those hatefulness and bitterness, He wants us to love people with the love that Jesus Christ has given us. So that's all I have for now, this is a summary of what Pastor Rich Wilkerson was preaching today at Trinity Church. So know that, know that I love you, most importantly Jesus Christ loves you, He's going to forgive you of your sins. If you haven't asked Jesus Christ in your heart to forgive you of your sins, I urge you right now, now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I pray today is the day of salvation. Say, Jesus, please, I now that you are the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me live my life to please you. I pray that one day I'll be in heaven with you forever. I want to be a child of God. I don't want to be a child. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven with you forever. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray something like that, you are a child of God. If you pray in the sincerity of your heart, that you are a child of God, God loves you, so do I. Please stay tuned the next time, in my next message, you know, next Sunday. So we'll see what happens. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Continue to watch my videos. Subscribe and like. God bless you. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you too. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye.